Today, we are gonna be doing a Q&A. So I asked for some questions from you and I'm gonna do my best to answer them. So the first question comes from Kyle E and he says, I'm from Minnesota as well and I was wondering if you knew of any good rock hunting locations around the Twin Cities or east of them. Do you by chance? So as you may or may not know, I am from Minnesota and lucky for us Minnesotans, there are absolutely wonderful places to look for rocks. I'm not super familiar with that area specifically, but here's kind of what I like to do when I look for places to go rock hounding. One of the things that I do most often is just kind of keep my eye out for areas when I'm driving to and from different places, especially if I'm going somewhere new um, or along a road that I'm not typically on. And I like to look for some kind of key signs, like if there is water nearby, if I see a sandy area, or of course if I see a rocky area. Other things I do to look for good rock hounding places is go to my local beaches. One trick that I do have for you that may or may not work is I do use my jet ski a lot. Well, technically it's my husband's jet ski. And I kind of go along the edge of the lakes that I'm on and look for little rocky areas or sandy areas there. I also look for places like gravel pits. You do have to ask for permission if you go to a gravel pit though um, and ask if you are allowed to look through their rocks. Some people let you, some people don't. It's just kind of gonna depend on who you ask. I have heard, however, that new construction areas, especially near the cities, Bloomington, Maple Grove, areas like like that if you see new construction and there are no signs posted you can actually rock hound in those locations as long as it is not on private property that is another really great place to go especially after it rains because you're digging up all kinds of new earth and new stuff that hasn't been seen before and I know that people have been able to find agates that way too the next question comes from Shixon hopefully I'm saying that right and they say how long have you been interested in rock slash tumbling and polishing them and what do I do so I have kind of been interested in rocks all of my life. I started out when I was a kid and then I kind of lost interest as I got older and I kind of re-sparked an interest in it after someone actually gifted me a rock and it was a really beautiful white agate. It was tumbled um, on this like beautiful little necklace wrapping and I don't know I saw it and I was just like oh my gosh I love rocks. <laughs> as weird as that is but I was just like dude this rock is so cool like I remember I had a rock collection. So I asked my family and I was like, hey, do you still have my rocks? And they did. And so I got those back and I was looking through them and I'm like, why don't I go out and look for my own rocks? I started watching people on YouTube. Shout out to Michigan Rocks, Agate Dad were the first two that I kind of started watching regularly. And I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> so that's kind of how I got reintroduced into rock hounding. For polishing them, what do I do? I have made a couple of videos on this topic that I will link here for you. I have honestly changed my strategy a little bit since these two videos, my Rock Tumbling 101 and Rock Tumbling 102, but for the most part, I follow kind of what I posted back then. I do plan to make a follow-up and kind of like an updated version of what I do now and what I found most successful now, the next question comes from Notabot, and they say, do you know of any resources for finding out what kinds of good tumbling rocks are in an area? One thing that I would recommend is you get a book for your area. I have, I'll show you, this book here that I absolutely love and I still reference very regularly. But this is the Minnesota version. Of course, wherever you are, you're gonna wanna type in your location and then rocks and minerals. And I think that they have one of these for like every state. One thing that's nice about this is at the top, it does tell you what the hardness is and kind of doing some research on your own to be able to find if these rocks are going to be good to tumble. Typically things like Jasper are found kind of all over. So that is one of the ones that I would recommend starting to tumble. Jaspers, agates, chalcedonies tumble really nicely. And typically you can find some variety of those in most areas in the United States that I know of. I'm not super familiar with other countries though. What I would recommend is maybe typing Jasper and then your local Location into Google and see if that is something that is in your area and then do the same thing with like agate and then really familiarize yourself with the look of that rock look up lots of different images on it see if there's any YouTube videos about those specific rocks to help you identify them when you're looking for them in your area the second question is
is how loud is running a tumbler? Kind of depends on the type of tumbler that you have. So, so far I've tried out the Loratone, the Nat Geo, the Stone Show, and the Harbor Freight. And then for those final three, I do have videos coming about them soon. <laughs> we'll plug there. Anyway, so I would say that out of those four that I've tried, the quietest one is probably going to be my Loratone and my Nat Geo. The other two are a bit louder. However, the Stone Show one is a three pound barrel. So it kind of makes sense that that one is louder. If you have a basement or an area that's not near your living space, I honestly don't hear the tumblers running and I have like all four of them running. Not right now, I did turn it off for the video because I'm in my basement, but I have them running all the time and I never really hear them unless it's like super quiet in my house. But typically with two kids, it's not ever really super quiet in my house. But yeah, so to kind of sum it up, it depends on the tumbler that you get. And there are also some soundproofing measures that you can use. I've heard about putting them in like foam coolers. But yeah, hopefully that helps a little for that one. Ooh, the next question is good. Do you ever start with beach stones that are already rounded by waves and sand? If so, which steps do you use? Do you skip grit one or even two? The most that I've ever done is skipped just the first step. I've never skipped the second stage. I kind of always start with the second stage if they're already pretty rounded, pretty smooth, don't have any big cracks or chips or holes in them. But yeah, I don't see a problem with skipping that first stage, especially since the first one does grind down your stones a lot and pretty significantly. So sometimes it is best to start on step two. The next one is, have you ever found or more likely considered where you live been gifted a piece of gaspetti? Um, I don't know what that is, hold on. Okay, so I'm just looking up this stone now and it is super cool. It's like a brilliant green. No, I've never gotten one before or have seen one honestly until now, but it is really cool. I like how it's like a brilliant lime green. It's almost like Mountain Dew green. The next question comes from World of Rock Hounds and if you haven't checked out his channel, you really should. He does live sales and I actually just recently bought a prophecy stone from him and it was so cool. I don't know, I saw it and I was like, this is super unique. If you haven't checked him out, and you're interested in purchasing rocks, I would definitely do that. The first one, what were your top three favorite rocks and minerals that you were gifted? I would have to say this really cool like chalcedony heart-shaped rock. It has this red veining running through it. It's so pretty. I have honestly been back and forth on if I should tumble it or not because I just really think it's beautiful how it is but I think it would look really cool tumbled too, so I don't know. This really gorgeous agate that also came from the same rock hound, that is one of the most beautiful agates that I have. I would also say that this plume agate is one of my favorites. I absolutely love like how it kind of looks almost like clouds. This giant piece of obsidian is definitely one of my favorites. And this slab of bowenite, when you put a light behind it, it is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I think that was more than three, so sorry. <laughs> I just get excited. The next question is, any plans to travel long distance for your channel? I am hoping to in the future. I'd like to travel to Michigan and Oregon um, for sure because I know that there are some really good areas in those locations, but it probably won't be for a little while yet, but one day I, I do hope to and I plan to. The next question is, what is your long-term goal for your channel? My goal is to kind of just keep doing what I'm doing. I really like rock hounding, I really like rock tumbling, and I really like sharing it with all of you. It really gets me excited about this hobby to hear from you and for people in the comments to kind of tell me what they do with their rock tumbling. That helps me with mine. And when I go on rock hounding locations, I love hearing stories from you guys about like places that you've been and cool rocks that you've found. And there's been so many people who've said like, I want to start doing this again with my grandchildren and really introduce it to them and make these memories. It's kind of my goal of the channel is to just keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully inspire other people to pick up this hobby because it's so fun, it's cheap, it's easy, and it's really rewarding. And the final question from World of Rock Hounds is, who were your top five rock peeps that inspired you to start a YouTube channel? The ones that kind of inspired me would be like Michigan Rocks, Agate Dad, Katie Did Rocks, World of Rock Hounds. <laughs> so yeah, those are kind of the people who have inspired me. The next question comes from Nikki B. What are the most important items slash tools to start out with if you're just beginning the hobby? 
So for rock hounding, one thing that I really like about this hobby is you really don't need much. <laughs> you kind of can just go out as is and look for rocks. However, if you want to step up your game, I would recommend getting like some sort of specific bag that you can put your rocks in. I have this really nice mesh one that kind of all the sand falls out of and it also helps them dry as I'm walking around instead of like a super enclosed one. So I really like that. I also have a fanny pack that I keep some pepper spray in because um, I think it's also really important that you're making sure you stay safe when you're rock hounding. It could be from other people, from animals, things like that. Uh, a good set of like rubber boots or water shoes I think are really important because when I first started out I would like literally go out in flip flops and <laughs> It was just not a good time. So definitely a quality pair of shoes. And yeah, honestly, I think that's about it kind of to get started with rock hounding. For rock tumbling, of course, you're gonna need a tumbler. And especially if you're just starting, I don't think you really need to splurge on something like the Loratone tumbler. You can start with something smaller to see if you first enjoy the hobby. For grit though, I would recommend using polyplastics or the rock shed. I personally really like polyplastics. I know a lot of people really like the rock shed, um, but those would be my two suggestions for that. The next question comes from Wojak and they say, have you ever used any polishing grits over 1,000? I've seen grits 8,000 to 10,000. Wow. Are they worth it in the end results? The polyplastics one, the four step, the polishing grit is the highest that I've ever used. I honestly don't really see a need for anything higher because I really like the shine that I get from the four stage, but it might be something that I try in the future just to kind of compare. Maybe you can get your rocks even shinier. The next question comes from Tapwi Tugi. Hopefully I said that right. In your search for unique stones and minerals, have you ever found any fossils? Great question. So yes, I have found fossils before. And one of like the very first fossils that I found was a super, super cool one. It has a druzy pocket and I absolutely love it. Another one that I found, I believe came from like a buffalo or something. It was like a buffalo, I can't remember if it was like a tooth or something, but it was really cool. <laughs> the next one comes from user and they say, what are the most amazing rocks that you have found? Okay, so my all-time favorite rock that I have ever found, I did not capture on camera because it was when I was first starting to kind of reintroduce myself to this hobby and I wasn't filming myself yet. But it is this gorgeous Lake Superior agate that I found on the shores of Lake Superior. So after I found this agate, I was hooked. I <laughs> love, it was like a little boost of serotonin and finding this beautiful agate for my first time ever was, I don't know, it was just amazing. And it really got me like back into the hobby. The next question comes from Downriver Mining and Lapidary by Jeffrey. They say, what stone do you want to tumble that you have not yet? So this one I am hoping to get started soon, but it is Labradorite. I've heard that Labradorite can be a more difficult stone to tumble. So I'm kind of trying to do my research on how to best get started with tumbling these because I really want them to turn out beautiful. I think that Labradorite is so cool and like such a pretty and unique stone. I actually bought some from the Rock Shed a while back, but I haven't kind of taken that step to start them because I really want to make sure that they turn out nice. The next two come from Carol Bennett. What do you do with all of your rocks? Great question. Um, I currently kind of just have them in containers. Some of the containers are like waiting to be polished. Some of them are just like my little organizing containers. I would like to start doing something with the rocks because I kind of feel bad like taking them, and I know this maybe sounds weird, but like taking them out of nature and then putting them into these tiny plastic containers and them just sitting on my desk. like. I feel like they probably were much happier in nature. <laughs> and I know that it's a rock, so that doesn't really make sense, but I don't know, it's just how I think about it. But anyways, I kind of want to start doing something with them, like using them as display or making jewelry out of them or learning how to facet them or kind of things like that, like to, to create them into something new rather than just being kind of tucked away. And the last question from Carol Bennett says, does it cost much electricity to run a rock tumbler? I honestly have not noticed a significant increase in my electricity bill and I currently have four tumblers running at all times. So no, I really don't think so. They do run 24 seven, which is I think where a lot of people get the concern that they might cause a significant increase in electricity. But I kind of almost think of it like your refrigerator and you know that's on all of the time 
it doesn't seem to draw that much energy and no, I haven't noticed a big difference. Thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. It's pretty insane to me that we are building this little community of rock hounds and rock lovers. And when I first started this channel, I knew I wanted to share my rock hounding adventures and my rock tumbling. And it's really exciting to know that people are interested and wanna follow along. And I remember not too long ago celebrating that I had 100 subscribers. And I was like so, so proud of that. So so having 10,000 is like insane. And now I think it's actually like at 11,000. So thank you so much. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.